We have Dr. S. V. Sharma, former Deputy Director, ISRO, joining us, uh, and my colleague Siddharth Bharadwaj also joining us. Well, welcome uh, to DD India, sir. Uh, my first question to you, Siddharth, uh, I just wanted to ask. Uh, that why uh, Nisar set to launch by uh, July uh, 30th. Uh, what are the, some of the most uh, groundbreaking features of this satellite and uh, how does it set apart from the previous Earth satellites? All right, a very good morning to you, Lipakshi, and certainly it's a dynamic collaboration, you know, between NASA and ISRO. Uh, you know, who made this satellite, NISA, which stands for the NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar. Uh, this satellite will be sent to space, Lipakshi, as per the details that we are getting in from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota on 30th of July at around 5.40. Uh, I, uh, IST, 1740 IST, you know, it will certainly change the dynamics. It will certainly change the way we look at our planet Earth because, you know, this technology is not just restricted to the United States or to India, but to the entire planet. It will, uh, it is an Earth observation satellite, you know, and it will give the all weather day and night data uh, with the interval of every 12 uh, uh, days. So that's, uh, you know, uh, that's where it's, it holds a great significance. You know, as far as uh, uh, the technology is concerned, then this satellite will be sent to space by ISRO's uh, GSLV F-16, and it will provide some critical details. You know, it will also study the evolution of Earth's crust. Apart from that, oil spill and natural disasters, uh, it will further help the researchers. Lipakshi, now, uh, you know, if we talk about the technology, then uh, some technologies which is which are being uh, used in in this particular satellite is you is being used for the first time. Um, you know, uh, for example. For example, if we talk about the technology, then it's a dual frequency SAR, and it also uses the sweep SAR technology. You know, when I talk about it, let's just simplify that. These technologies will give the HD resolution images. Uh, when you when you get the HD resolution images of of Earth, uh, so you the, it will further help researchers, you know, to study more about Earth, that what's there and what's causing uh, one particular thing. This particular satellite will also tell you. Um, Anything, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to the Earth's surface, even a minute change in the Earth's surface will be detected by this satellite. So when I say this, Lipakshi, let's further break it down. Uh, when you when you think when you talk about ground reforming, when you talk about ice sheet movements, when you talk about vegetation, uh, 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 you know, dynamics, it will help in that. So when when I talk about uh, the ground deforming, you know, there are some places uh, wherein uh, uh, the impending earthquake and volcanoes are there, so it can detect that. So meaning more and more people could be evacuated, uh, you know, saving millions of lives. Also, when I talk about the ice sheet movements, Lipakshi, it's about the, it, it tells you about the, 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 the rise in sea level. Uh, so the rise in sea level usually affects the coastal areas and the island nations. So people from uh, there could further be evacuated, uh, you know, property could be saved, and important uh, things which are, you know, there in the property could be saved. Apart from that, when I talk about the vegetation dynamics, it will tell you about the, the soil moisture and certain other things, uh, you know, further uh, giving the uh, uh, food security. So in many ways, uh, this satellite is going to help the researchers and also not just researchers, you know, it will also help farmers. It will also, you know, in growing cities yes. as well, Lipakshi, it will also tell you about whether the area is sinking. Uh, you know, further preventing the bridges and uh, roads uh, to collapse unexpectedly. So all in all, it's a dynamic and it's a great collaboration. You know, it also tells you it's about... In addition to the great collaboration, it is surely, Siddharth, a big breakthrough as well. India's space program, India's space technology that has come so far is certainly, uh, you know, commendable. In fact, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, before the start of monsoon session yesterday also, he praised uh, on uh, Shubhanshu Shukla, you know, and he, he said that it's a matter of pride for around 1.4 billion people. And it certainly speaks volumes about the fact that how far the space technology has come. Uh, 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 and and it, it's certainly a matter of, uh, of pride. And uh, indeed, a great collaboration again between uh, NASA and ISRO. Back, ISRO. back to you, Lipakshi. All right, a matter of great pride, of course. Sir, I want to ask you, this is the first time NASA and ISRO have collaborated on an Earth observation satellite of this scale. How significant is this? Uh, good morning, Lapakshi, and good morning to the million uh, DD viewers. Of course, uh, it is uh, the great moment for uh, this country. Uh, for the first time in the world, uh, we have uh, such a, uh, you know, a satellite for uh, the civilian usage and also the first time uh, in the history of ISRO and in the history of this country, 
we have such a, a collaboration where uh, a satellite of uh, more than 3,400 kg is being made. It has taken nearly 12 years to Pakshi. You remember, it is a very you know complex satellite with uh, L band and S band um, SAR, and uh, this satellite, which uh, uh, as was uh, detailed by you, uh, provides a very useful information in terms of uh, the uh, the common man. Basically, we are touching to trying to reach every common man. How you are trying to save every common man and uh, to serve every common man is the goal of this particular NI satellite. As we can see, there is a L band and S band uh, synthetic aperture radar, which is the first time in the world that such a 12 meter antenna has been used for uh, L band, uh, um, L band, uh, you know, SAR. And uh, here there are two payloads, as I said, uh, L bands are supplied by the NASA and the S band, uh, S -band uh, SAR is made by ISRO itself. And uh, this satellite also has a payload uh, component as well as uh, the bus component. The entire bus system is being done by ISRO. Uh, bus system meaning uh, electrical system, mechanical system, the propulsion, the uh, control system, the uh, data recording, data movement, and uh, uh, the communication systems, entire uh, the bus system, which is a cuboid, is being completely done by ISRO, and the S-band SAR is done by this uh, Space Application Center, of course, a part of uh, ISRO. Therefore, there is a contribution, equal contribution from NASA as well as ISRO, and also, please remember, this is one of the most expensive satellites which uh, the country has made. Maybe it is about um, 9,000 crores uh, is approximately the cost which has been estimated to be, and one of the most heaviest satellites of this class, which is about 2,400 kg, and uh, on lift of it could be even going up to 3,400 kg with the fuel added. So uh, this is uh, one of the most prestigious uh, satellite as far as both uh, NASA, uh, ISRO uh, as an organization concerned, and ISRO uh, India and the US in large is concerned. Of course, there were earlier many uh, such uh, collaborations, but the scale at which uh, such an activity has been done over the period of 10 to 12 years, please remember, that these two organizations, that these two countries have been working continuously to make this one of the most complex satellites. And several challenges were faced while making the satellite, uh, specifically in terms of uh, the uh, uh, L-band uh, SAR, which is one of the most complex uh, payloads which uh, the world has seen. I can say it is going to serve the humanity, 140 crore people in particular, and the billions of people uh, at large. And 12 days uh, revisit of this satellite provides an extremely useful high resolution uh, data uh, with which you can compare the uh, data of the uh, you know last pass to this pass and it has a, a swath about a swath of about 250 kilometers approximately and that is one of the greatest requirement where uh, uh, where the uh, specifically the uh, disaster management the vegetation the ice movement the uh, way the glaciers are happening the way the erosion or the developments are happening in the earth which is uh, one of the most important satellite and one of the most important requirement uh, with which these satellites are going to serve. More than anything, even uh, the detection of the uh, you know changes in the earth surface where there can be disaster, where millions of people and billions of people can be saved with the advanced warning that this satellite uh, carries is something which is really of uh, immense help and importance. And this also has many other techni technological and technical challenges in terms of building the satellite itself, it is such a huge, you know, uh, satellite that even uh, the transportation, et cetera, had been a very big challenge. And the 12 meter antenna, whatever you are seeing on the TV screen is folded uh, while the low end launching, which is called as uh, storing condition, the antennas will be stored. And also the, uh, uh, the solar panels will be stored. It will be like a cuboid when it is uh, being uh, launched. Uh, so you can see the way the, it is uh, cuboid will be uh, launched. And right, once, sir. Uh, the launch happened, the deployment of the solar panel happens for the first time, and uh, then the power supply will be uh, available for uh, the satellite for Absolutely. remaining operations such as deployment of other antennas, etc. Or dual Pakshi. Right, sir. Sir, as you also mentioned, and we know that NASA promised us to scan the entire Earth every 12 days with unmatched accuracy. Uh, given the satellite's ability to detect even slight changes in the Earth's surface, how could it be used to track and mitigate the impact of climate change, especially in the vulnerable regions we're facing right now, like the Himalayas or the coastal India? Uh, basically, this is, we should remember this is a radar. This is a synthetic aperture radar. This is the first time which, which such a you know, synthetic aperture preparator is being made where you can uh, find the changes in the weather conditions, in the weather conditions also, so atmospheric conditions, I should say, 
that the way the winds are moving, the way the you know the temperature is changing, the way uh, the uh, the uh, the changes on the earth surface is happening. So whenever you detect uh, say, for example, a volcanic eruption, say, for example, uh, you know, changes in the sea, etc. Uh, how we detect, uh, you know, uh, disaster is always to find a change. Uh, now the weather, you know, the wind speed is about, say, 50 kilometers per hour, and when the wind speed is expected to be 100 kilometers, if you are able to detect it, uh, you know, uh, in advance, then there can be a disaster, you know, warning system with which uh, several lives could be saved, basically, from the point of view of looking at the uh, atmospheric condition, looking at the sea condition, looking at the, the various temperatures which uh, this temp you know on the surface of the uh, earth, which uh, the satellite will be able to detect day in, in day out, day out. Please remember it is a day in day out the satellite. So for the irrespective of the uh, the availability of light, uh, sunlight, or with the absence of sunlight, these satellites can give the data. This uh, extremely extremely important. Uh, that's why this satellite has, uh, you know, got the attention of the entire world and also uh, the country is looking forward for this satellite to be launched and uh, the services to be available. Absolutely, sir. We're looking uh, forward every, for the launch. Every farmer, every uh, fisherman and every human being on this mother earth. Absolutely, rightly said. We, or every Indian is looking forward for the launch. Siddharth, my next question to you. What role uh, did Indian scientists and engineers uh, play in the development of NISAR and what components or systems were developed indigenously? Oh, definitely, uh, Lipakshi. The Indian scientists have, have played a great, a pivotal role, in fact, in this joint collaboration, which is the first collaboration between NASA and ISRO. You know, the, the, when I talk about the technology which is being used, is the dual frequency SAR, uh, which is being used in that, with uh, L, L band by NASA and S band by ISRO. You're, so, you know, they have the, the, both the sides have equally contributed uh, to this satellite. Uh, so, Again, I would like to say that, you know, the space technology that uh, uh, India has now, you know, the world's look at India, the way India has positioned its, itself on the world map, you know, the technology which we are using, everyone is praising India, the journey has come so far, and this satellite will actually tell about the minute, the minutest details, you know, even if it's a minute uh, uh, a change in the Earth's surface, um, Lepakshi, so that way it will also help scientists, it will also help researchers, and not just that, apart from that, you know, a, a, a farmer sitting uh, at his house, uh, it, it will, the satellite would also help the farmer because it will tell you about the, the moisture, it will also tell you about the soil moisture and how the rain patterns work. So according to that, a farmer could be well prepared for, uh, for, for their crops. So in that manner, uh, you know, this this technology is going, this satellite is going to help, uh, you know, uh, like researchers and uh, farmers. Apart from that, you know, when you talk about the technology, uh, I also also mentioned, you know, the L bands by NASA and S bands by ISRO, uh, ISRO uh, you right. know, the technology which is being used. The sweep SAR technology uh, is used in this satellite, which will further give the high resolution images. You know, it, it helps a lot to the researchers who is doing research. This satellite will further uh, tell about uh, the evolution of Earth's crust, which is very, very important, uh, you know, right. in research regarding how, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the weather patterns behave and how the Earth behaves. And apart from that, the technology, like I just mentioned, uh, you know, which will be used in this uh, satellite will be beneficial uh, for everyone, uh, you know, because like I said, it's not re just restricted to the United States or India. It's, it's, it will scan the entire Earth in a gap of 12 days. 12 so days. that way, it's very, very crucial. Uh, wow. Apart from that, Lepakshi, when it comes to the space program, India's space program, when it comes to India's space technology, uh, you know, everyone is looking at India. And also, it aligns with, uh, with India's vision of Vixit Bharat 2047. Uh, you know, everyone is also, you know, in a recent example, I would like to, uh, you know, tell that it was a, it was indeed a proud moment for the entire country when Shubhanshu Shukla went to, to the interna International Space Station, becoming the first Indian, uh, you know, to, to, to be there on the International Space Station and second Indian to be on the space. Uh, you know, the experiments which he conducted there will, will help from agriculture sector to the space sector. Right. Uh, so, yeah, definitely India's space program has come a long way and it's being appreciated uh, by the entire world. Uh, Lipakshi, back to you. Right. Thank you so much, Siddharth. And thank you so much, Dr. Sharma, for joining us and giving us all those details.